Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 16 on electronics. My voice is kind of dying, I've been sick this weekend, uh, but don't worry, it's not the coronavirus, it's just a uh, sore throat and head cold. I hate those, but, you know, it's being human. Um, I love electronics, it's kind of my thing. Uh, some of you are like, it is not my thing, I don't like anything electronic, you know, I'd rather just write on paper, and that's fine. Um, but electronics is becoming such a big deal today that we, we kind of need to know how to do it. In fact, <coughs> in fact, some schools are even um, making electronics and computer science a uh, main course of study, just like English or history. That's pretty crazy. Um, I hope that you'll enjoy this. I have a couple of fun things planned for electronics, including learning a little bit of coding. We're going to interview a uh, computer scientist. That's kind of cool. And uh, take a look at what he has to say. That's next week, so I don't want to spoil the fun. But this week, we're going to get started with Foundations of Economics. Economics started, or sorry, electronics. Um, electronics started a long time ago. And uh, we need to learn how they started in order to know how they became today. Um, if you look back at my first phone, I got my first phone back in 2008, I think. 2008. I mean, some of you, you know, weren't even in school yet. And it was a, uh, it was a little droid razor, about yay big. I thought it was the coolest thing. I look at what I look at that, and I look at what I have now, and I think, how did I ever use that? <laughs> um, electronics has come a long way. Electronics is a branch of electricity uh, that studies the motion behavior of electrons. Um, it started in the ninth or 1850s. Scientists discovered electricity could travel through a vacuum or a space that no matter was in. You see, not a lot of things travel in a vacuum. Uh, I love Star Wars, right? And Star Wars shows these massive space fights. You know, and, you know, this firing red laser comes out of nowhere with all these sound effects. But without matter, sound wouldn't travel in space. Um, we wouldn't be able to hear like we do here. Um, additionally, uh, without things to bounce off of, it'd be kind of weird. Uh, looking at light, um, but but electricity doesn't work that way. It doesn't need matter, um, so through a vacuum tube, it travels just straight through. And these scientists discovered that these electrons traveled through these tubes from negative to positive. Now they didn't know about electrons yet, um, or they were just just starting to find out about electrons. This is right around the work of. Um, some famous scientists like J.J. Uh, Thompson, who discovered parts of the nucleus of an atom. And when going from negative to positive, they called it this thermionic effect. They thought it had to do with um, heat or ions. Uh, they didn't really understand why things went from negative to positive, but we do. Electrons are negative. And if you have something that's negative, something that's negative is going to travel to something that's positive. And that's the basis of all of these things, all of these really nice gadgets, which, wow, this is really cool. PlayStation, MacBook, iPhone, iPad, I don't even know what that is. Camera of some kind. It's pretty cool. It's, that looks like a VR set. Um, anyway, some neat electronics there. Uh, the cathode ray. Early experiments with vacuums knew something was coming from a cathode, a negative electrode. We know these as electrons. They called them cathode rays. They had no clue. They said, hey, there's some sort of rays coming from this cathode. There's this guy, his name is William Crookes, and he invented this cathode ray tube where uh, he had this cathode, and of course the cathode is making electrons and the anode on the other side and of course the electrons would pass from the cathode to the anode and he created a uh, little hole 
that you could focus these um, electrons into hitting a wall, a glass or a phosphor wall. And give me just a second. Sorry, I, uh, I keep getting calls, but that's okay, because that's what I'm here for. Uh, we're on the next slide, um, and we're moving on from these uh, simple cathode ray tubes. Um, when it was discovered that if cathode rays hit the anode hard enough, it produced x-rays. Um, and this guy named William Rowenchen, and he's a German guy, he discovered he can photograph his hand, and these x-rays go right through his hand, give him a great picture. Uh, what he didn't realize is that x-rays are pretty harmful. Um, they're not as harmful as gamma rays, uh, but over time they'll really mess you up. And um, so we didn't really know about the dangers of this science yet, and fortunately a lot of these guys that experimented with x-rays ended up getting uh, various types of cancers. Um, I think about Marie Curie, who experimented with x-rays and gamma rays. She was just laser in herself all over the place and she died a uh, pretty unique um, scientific death. Now uh, commercially um, or for business or profit um, we as scientists started creating in the early 1900s um, what's called a diode and a triode. Um, it's kinda like a valve and it's and it's useful. I have a picture to the right. Not that you you'll really um, get everything that's going on there, but it's but it's useful in dealing with the movement of electrons and um, how to how to contain them and use them in a device. And so a diode uses two electrodes, an anode and cathode. Um, a triode uses three electrodes an anode and two cathodes or two cathodes and an anode um, and that's where we get um, a lot of our devices that we have today consider triodes prove very useful they're sensitive electric for electric transmission triodes became the basis for television radar computers radio um, a lot of things that we use today use a, a triode and um, so if you like watching TV, you better be very thankful for Mr. Uh, DeForest and Mr. John Fleming and, uh, because they created um, the stuff that's the backbone for a lot of these things. And that's the end of section 16.1. Make sure you do those section reviews. We'll pick up with 16.2 on semiconductors tomorrow. I'll see you guys later.